press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. What is the tax base of a liability? Let's understand that. Let's read that right up first. The tax base of a liability is its carrying amount less any amount that will be deductible for tax purposes in respect of that liability in the future periods. In the case of revenue which is received in advance, the tax base of the resulting liability is its carrying amount less any amount of the revenue that will not be taxable in the future periods. So just like the tax base of an asset, here also we are having two categories. So if it is a revenue received in advance, I am dealing with the second part of the definition first, that in case if it is a revenue which is received in advance, then the tax base will be the carrying amount of the liability at which you are showing it in the balance sheet, less any amount of revenue that will not be taxable in future. So we can consider that as a special situation. And for all the other liabilities, the tax base shall be the carrying amount of the liability in the balance sheet less any amount that is deductible for tax in future. So just like the tax base of an asset, let us also summarize the tax base of a liability. As you can see, I have summarized the point of tax base of a liability on the board. Those two situations and in each of those situations, what shall be the tax base? So I'll request you to write in your notebooks. Just give the heading tax base of liability. Please put it in your notebooks. You'll say tax base of a liability. Underline that and under that put this particular note. The two situations and what the tax base shall be. So you can just pause the video at this stage and copy it from the board. Yes, let's do question three and in case if there are any doubts, the moment we will consider figures, it will definitely become very clear. In question three, they are saying for following liabilities, determine its carrying amount and the tax base and decide whether it gives rise to any temporary difference. So we will first find out what is the carrying amount in balance sheet. That will not be much of a problem. We will have to identify what is its tax base. And the difference between the carrying amount in the balance sheet and its tax base, that shall be the temporary difference. Again, I'll repeat, what is temporary difference? What will be its treatment? That we are reserving for further discussion a bit later. Right now, we are simply trying to understand how exactly shall we determine the carrying amount of a liability and more importantly, what will be its tax base. So we are given five items in question three and for each of those items, let's find out what will be the tax base. Use this question as an opportunity to understand how we can calculate the tax base. So I request you to not be in a hurry to jot down everything in your books. Just understand this question, then later on you can put it in your books, right? Item wise, I will like to know what is the carrying amount in balance and just writing it in short what will be the tax base and then of course what shall be the temporary difference right so let's see the first item they are saying current liabilities include outstanding salaries of rupees 5 lakhs which has already been deducted for tax purpose so the first item which they have given me is outstanding salaries so that's the first item given to us they are saying current liabilities are including outstanding salaries of five lakhs so that obviously is the carrying amount in the balance sheet so i'm getting that as five lakhs tax base here it is use this write up to find out what is the tax base Outstanding salary is not a revenue received in advance, so it will fall in the other category. How do you get the tax base of other category? You have to start with the carrying amount in balance sheet. I'm leaving this thing blank. I'm first writing the carrying amount in the balance sheet, as you can see here. And then we say less amount deductible for tax in future. Amount deductible for tax in future. Read, it, read item A carefully. Towards the end, they are saying which has already been deducted for tax. 
you have already claimed the deduction. If you have already claimed the deduction, then the amount deductible in tax for future obviously will turn out to be zero. So I put zero over here, my tax base becomes five. And the temporary difference will be zero. So that is our first item. The next one. Current liabilities include contribution of employer to provident fund of rupees 10 lakhs. Okay. So we say contribution to employer's provident fund. We are saying it is 10 lakhs of rupees. So that is the carrying amount in the balance sheet. And then they are saying which is allowed for tax only on cash basis. In Income Tax Act, we have something known as Section 43B. In Section 43B, a list of items is given, deduction for which will be available only on cash basis. You have to basically pay that before you file your income tax return and then and then only you will get the tax. So what happens is, as far as accounts are considered, the expenditures will be recorded, the expenditures will be accounted for on accrual basis. But you will not get deduction unless and until that expenditure has been paid in cash. And one such item in section 43B is the employer's contribution to the EPF. So on accrual basis, I'm showing it in my books, but I will get deduction of it only when I will pay it in tax. Once again, in what category will it really fall? It's again not a revenue received in advance. It will fall in the other category. So in other category, I'll start with the carrying amount in the balance sheet. So that in our example will turn out to be 10 less amount deductible for tax in future. I will not get deduction of it in the current year because I have still not paid that in cash. But in the next year or years, right in any assessment year in which you will pay it in cash, you will get a deduction for the same. So the amount deductible in future is 10. So this will be 0 and the temporary difference is 10. Let's take the next item, item C. They are saying current liabilities include interest of rupees 1 lakh of next year received in advance. Okay, so we say interest received in advance. How much is that? 1 lakh. So I say 1 lakh over here. Finally, we are getting the first category item. They are saying revenue received in advance, right? Interest is received in advance. The tax base will be carrying amount in balance sheet. So again in brackets, I say 1 minus. They are saying revenue not taxable in future. Read carefully item C. Interest is of the next year, which you have already received in advance, but it is taxed on cash basis. Although the interest income is not of current year, it is for the next year, but I have already received it. But because I have received it, income tax is uh, income tax authorities are arguing that say you have already received in cash, and because you have already received in cash, you have to pay tax on it. So what happens is in the current year itself, I have paid the tax on this entire 1 lakh of rupees which I have received. Now they say carrying amount in balance sheet that I have put here, less revenue not taxable in future. 1 lakh of interest income has already got taxed in the current year. If it has already got taxed in current year, I don't have to pay any tax in future. In other words, the revenue not taxable in future is the entire 1 lakh, isn't it? So I will say it is 1 over here, so it becomes 0 and the temporary difference is 1. Next, D. A company has a term loan of rupees 10 lakhs. Great. So I introduce a term loan over here. The term loan is 10 lakhs. I would like to know what is its tax base. It will again fall in the other category. So carrying amount in balance sheet. So I'll say carrying amount in balance sheet is 10 minus amount deductible for tax in future. No portion of term loan is deductible in future. Yes, the interest which I am paying on the term loan, that is a deductible business expenditure. But when I repay the principal amount, 
there is not going to be any taxation deduction available on the repayment of the principal amount. So if they are asking us that what is the amount deductible for tax in future, the amount deductible for tax in future is zero. So I get 10 here, the temporary difference is zero. And finally, the last item E, <coughs> uh, yes, they are saying current liability includes outstanding fines and penalties. So outstanding fines and penalties. How much is it? 2 lakhs of rupees. So carrying amount in the balance sheet is 2 lakhs. I would like to know what is its tax base. It will again fall in the others category. So I say carrying amount in balance sheet. I will put that 2 over here minus amount deductible for tax in future. They are themselves saying in, info, uh, in item E that they are disallowed for tax. So what is the amount deductible for tax in future? It is disallowed. If it is disallowed, that means the amount deductible for tax in future is zero. So I'll get two over here and the temporary difference will turn out to be zero. I will again help you to walk through this entire <coughs> uh, say, uh, illustration or this question. I'll again help you out with it. In case if you have missed out anything, please hear me carefully. Outstanding salaries, they are saying in item A, which has already been deducted for tax. I have already claimed the deduction. So the amount deductible for tax in future, here it is. Amount deductible for tax in future. I have already claimed the deduction. So obviously it will be zero. So I'm getting the tax base as five. Then they have given you contribution to EPF on accrual basis. But I will get deduction of it when I will pay tax in, uh, sorry, when I will pay it in cash in the next assessment year or maybe subsequent assessment years. So what will happen is, again, it will be the carrying amount in balance sheet. I say 10, current year, no deduction is available, but deduction will be available in future. Entire 10 lakhs is deductible. So I put 10 here and I get the tax base as zero. This is the odd one out, right? Every other is falling in the other category. This is falling in the first category. So carrying amount in balance sheet, I say one. And then they say revenue not taxable in future. On entire one lakh, I have paid tax in the current year itself. Because I have paid tax in the current year, now no amount of revenue is taxable in future. That is the reason I say that the revenue not taxable in future is the entire one because in current year itself on entire one I have paid the tax. That gives me a tax base of zero. Term loan I believe is a very simple one. You are not going to get any deduction for the term loan that you are repaying. That's the reason it is zero here. And outstanding fines and penalties. I do not get any deduction for outstanding fines and penalties. That is the reason I say that the amount deductible for tax in future is zero. So that is what gives me a tax base of two. So that's our solution for question three. What you can do is you can pause the video here and you can write down this particular answer. Yes, in question 4, similar liabilities are given and we are supposed to work out what is its carrying amount in the balance sheet and also what is going to be its tax base. I will really insist that you do question 4 on your own. So first, just try it on your own and then we will discuss what is its solution. So pause the video over here and solve question 4 on your own. I hope you solved question 4 on your own. This is what you should be getting for question 4. Just compare your answers with what I have put on the board. I hope you are getting these answers. The carrying amount in the balance sheet, the tax base and the resultant temporary difference. Just compare it with your answer. Of course, I'd like to discuss each of the items. 
They are saying current liabilities include accrued expenses with a carrying amount of rupees 50,000. So I am putting 50,000 over here. It will fall in the other category. So carrying amount in balance sheet 50,000. They are saying the related expense will be deducted for a tax purpose on a cash basis. So you have been accounting on accrual basis, but you will be getting deduction on cash basis. So we say carrying amount in balance sheet 50,000 less amount deductible for tax in future. In future, I will pay in cash and claim entire 50,000 as deduction. So that gives me a tax base of zero. Very much similar is the next one. Current liabilities include accrued expenses with a carrying amount of rupees 50,000. Here is the related expenses already deducted. If it is already deducted, then the amount deductible for tax in future will be zero. Accordingly, your tax base will change. So part one and part two, right? There is play of words over there and it is resulting into a different tax base. Current liability includes accrued fines and penalties. It's very similar to one of the items that we had done earlier, 10,000. I will not get any deduction. So amount deductible for tax in future is zero. So I get 10,000. Then we have a term loan of 10 lakhs. Nothing is going to be uh, deductible for the term loan. So it will be zero. Again, I am suggesting to you whatever interest you will pay on that term loan, that is a different story. That deduction will be available. We are talking about the deduction of the principal amount. We don't get deduction for principal amount. And that is the reason we say zero. And the last one is of the first situation. Current liability include interest revenue received in advance. So 25,000 of the next year is already received in the current year. It is not the current year income, so I am showing it as a liability. But taxation authorities are suggesting that you have already received it in cash, so please go ahead and pay the tax. So I have already paid that tax on 25,000. If I have already paid tax on 25,000, then revenue not taxable in future will be the entire 25,000. So I put 25,000 here and my tax base turns out to be zero. Of course, the difference between the two is what is giving rise to that temporary difference. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update.